congratulated John. Uh, I told him before the game I felt so badly for Alex because he's a appears to be a nice young man. I saw him during his high school days and then played against him the last couple of years or last year and this year. Uh, they were far more superior on the defensive end than our offense was. And I thought they dictated what we did on the offensive end with their athleticism, their quickness, their strength, their size. Uh, we didn't do a very good job of uh, uh, scoring in a half court. We got some breaks and uh, uh, breakaways early and got something out of our break, but we didn't do a very good job offensively in a half court. Um, I thought two big keys for us was the turn number of turnovers. Uh, we can't do that. And then that was one of our emphasis we put up on the wall. We put three of them up on the board. And another one was the fact that we wanted to play without fouling. We let them shoot 31 free throws. And I'm not saying that's the referees. I said we. Uh, we fouled them way too much. They were much more aggressive getting the ball to the basket uh, on the drive and much more aggressive getting the ball to the basket with their big guys going to the basket instead of shooting fadeaways. We got it to nine, and uh, I th thought we were going to be right there at the end. And then uh, Steve told me four of their next six uh, were breaks or lob dunks. It seemed like about 50 of them to me, but uh, we had a couple of turnovers during that stretch as well. It was a man's game out there today, and I thought that uh, uh, their uh, athleticism, their physical play was much more to the task than we were. And uh, again, I'm not, that's not a negative in any way towards Kentucky. I, we've got to do a better job of beating the guy to the spot. That's what they do, and uh, uh, it's, it's a physical game, and uh, they just played better and coached better. If you have questions, please raise your hand. We'll get the wireless microphone to you. Roy, how, how big of a bear are they when they're making the three? I told John we can cure a lot of people's three-point woes. They just see that like Carolina jersey, and everybody makes every one of them. You know, we tried to play a little bit with zone early, and we haven't played any zone this year. And they make, you guys probably have it on the stats or something, but I think they made two of their first three or three of their first four, something like that. But it's uh, uh, we didn't do a good enough job in the zone. We didn't get there and guard them. Uh, they've Texas played them zone, but they challenged a lot of those. I think they made their first three in the Texas game with less than three minutes to play. But Texas challenged those threes much out of the zone much better than we did. And then when we went man to man, uh, the dribble penetration really hurt us and they pitched out. And, and they made some of them. You know, sometimes guys don't make them in an open gym, but they made them today with a lot of people in the stands. Roy, how, how much can Cauley Stein in a, in a quick burst really change sort of the He's pretty doggone effective. You know, I watched him in the Texas game, and I even watched it over last night, and he was unbelievable in that game. You know, it's hard to imagine he was a wide receiver in high school. Uh, but uh, he, uh, as you said, he affects the game in every way. He blocks shots, he makes steals, he gets follow dunks, he gets dunks when guards penetrate, they throw it up around the rim, and he goes and gets it. Uh, but he is a complete player, and, and uh, you look at it, he affected the game drastically and only took nine shots. I think in the Texas game, it was probably about the same thing. Uh, but uh, they are very gifted. And John does a great job with them. He's got everybody buying into the uh, sharing the minutes and sharing the basketball. You know, they have 19 assists, 15 turnovers in an up and down game. And we're trying to press and trying to do some things. And we have 13 assists and 18 turnovers. So their defense was just so much stronger. And I think that was the dominating thing in the game. And, and Willie is the probably <coughs> spearheads all of that. Well, yeah, yesterday Kentucky seemed uh, stunned by the whole Alex point mm -hmm. for his injury. I'm wondering if there's anything you'd look for early in the game to see maybe they're affected by that adversely. You know, there's a couple of trains of thought. Coach Smith I used to always think if you lose a guy that that next game you're going to be so much better because everybody's going to try to pull for, you know, give a little more effort and play even better. But over long term, nobody's going to be better if you lose one of your better players. Uh, but I think from reading all the comments in this morning's paper, he's the kind of kid that I think he is from a distance. So it had to hurt everybody. And at the same time, uh, the comments that they made about him would make me think that he might have been challenging their rear ends in the locker room before the game. Who knows? Uh, but it's, uh, it's a loss because he really is a gifted player. Uh, they've got some uh, some depth, which is going to help them get through all the, 
things, but you hate, like I said, you hate for something like that to happen to the kid. Why was Marcus, man? Why was Marcus able to get more looks in the second half? And if you're going to look at a positive, we saw some signs of second half Marcus from last year. Yeah. He made some shots. You know, we've been talking about his shot a little bit. There's nothing mechanically wrong with his shot. Uh, he probably needs to get his feet set a little bit more. And uh, But three times, uh, no, four times today, he went up in the air to shoot the ball, and their defense was so good he had to pass it. Uh, but he did get a couple of looks, and he made a couple of tough ones. Uh, we need him to shoot the ball like that, but we need some other guys to step up and make shots also. I mean, we shoot. 56% in the first half, no, excuse me, 54% in the first half, and then you're not going to beat Kentucky. Kentucky, when they're a real good team, shooting 38% in the second half. Well, does, does a game like this kind of expose any physical limitations you guys have in terms of size and strength? Well, it, uh, <laughs> the team we're playing is pretty doggone physically imposing, but whoever they play. You know, I t said in the press conference yesterday, somebody said that Portland Trailblazers are the only team in America that was taller. And, uh, you know, so physically, uh, it, they're going to show a lot of people some limitations, but uh, uh, you've got to try to counter that with something that you do well yourselves. And we didn't do a very good job of sharing the ball and spreading the floor and being patient. We took some of the worst shots today that we've taken all year, but I think it's because their pressure took us out of the, our comfort zone. Coach, Bryce gave you a good first half to your right. Yeah. Um, did they do anything to limit his effectiveness in the second half? Well, he gave us some good looks early because it was on the break and a couple out of bounds plays and things like that. In the second half, I think he made one field goal. I think is all. But uh, their big guys are good. Um, they had 12 steals and five block shots, and a lot of that was their big guys. I saw Willie diving on the floor. I saw Dakara di diving on the floor. Um, Bryce did hurt them in the first half, but most of it was in the open court. Roy. Uh you, you've had some teams with a lot of good players on them, and they've you know, managed to handle the minutes and everything. What's the key to having a lot of depth and having guys accept roles like that? You know, this it may be even more of a challenge for John than anything that I've gone through. I've always said I could get nine guys enough playing time, eight easily, and nine guys enough playing time to keep them happy. You know, and, and John was trying to get ten, and, uh, you know, I don't know what he's going to do because that's – it's the reason they pay him all that money to make those big decisions like that. But uh, uh, you have to have special kids, I'd say, is the first thing, that they have to be concerned about the name on the front of the jersey. They have to be willing to, to give in. Um, I've got wonderful kids in my locker room, and we've got to be concerned about the name on the front of the jersey a little more. But if I had to pick one thing, I would, of course, would say the size or athleticism. I guess that's two things. But the next thing that's most impressive about uh, uh, John's club to me is uh, how unselfish they appear to be. That's a pretty doggone good trait. And when you add the size and le athleticism and then add their willingness to work really hard defensively, uh, now you're painting a very uh, complete picture. But I think it's the character of the kids. And, and they, they trust John, uh, John's staff. I mean, those guys have all been around for a while. And I think their kids uh, trust the staff that if you give in of your own selfishness and become more unselfish with playing time, with shots and everything, at the end, the players will be taken care of. I really believe that. Uh, our 2009 team, all those guys tested the waters and they came back and just trusted each other and everybody worked out okay. So I think that's, they've done a nice job with good kids.